Hello, Relive fans. I'm going to assume uh, you are Relive fans if you are watching this video. Uh, this is just kind of a sneak peek into kind of the life of an SSS player, kind of in the fringe top 50 right now. I, I was in the top 20 last season. I uh, just want to show you what my team looks like. It's Futaba's birthday, so we just got Puck here. Um, I have her leveled all the way. Um, she's actually 8.3, um, and I guess I'll, I can use this to jump into talking about uh, my units. So Futaba, we'll start with. She's going to be purely band bait. If the, you know, if my opponents hold down on her, look, see rank eight, I may be in a little bit of trouble because they'll be able to use that information to leave her unbanned. But hopefully, I can get a few opponents to ban her and leave you know one of my more important girls unbanned staying kind of with the tanks because we top is more of a tank I have um, Foxy Mao and I have um, Moriarty up in front now Moriarty is my tank of choice if I can help it but I only have three back row girls I could actually ban two of my back row girls and I would lose out on her unit skill which is pretty useful um, now, I'm not going to be so forceful in trying to use her because I do have this plethora of mid-row girls here that I can choose from. So there's very there's a high likelihood that I'll be using Foxy Mao over here because she doesn't rely on the back row to be strong. And she actually provides some help in terms of... Oh, we don't want to do that. Some help in terms of getting the rest of my team charged, which is going to be especially helpful... Um, if I run against some Hound Rukos back here. She has a 2 AP brilliance uh, to give to a couple of, or the, my two highest act power. Moriarty, obviously, for both of them, I do want them to climax early. Foxy Mao turns the back three, um, she increases their AP or act uh, points by one, which can really slow down an attack. So she's useful that way. Uh, moving on to my mid row. Um, I'm going to be looking at Diao here. She's um, one of my higher US. I believe she is US 10 right now. Uh, let's see. US 10. So yeah, so all of my mid-row girls, have, when she's out there, have their HP increased by about 30%, their defense and special defense up by about 20%, which is especially useful when I'm going to be using Puck eventually um, to increase their health. But the whole point of her is that in addition to being able to give burn and causing some confusion um, and her heals, my goodness, she's broken character, but uh, she allows all of these girls, all these mid-row girls to be useful um, beyond fi the final act where they'll still have a lot of health and they'll still be able to tank some hits. Um, Cinderlala here, she's actually US 14. She's a pretty beefy, uh, beefy cutie. Um, I have her in there um, for actually very good reasons. She's kind of an anti-Marie, anti-Pollux character. You will kind of you might see her in action in case I have to let some, I don't know, maybe some pucks. Uh, I have to ban some pucks and let one of those girls through, a Pollux or a Marie, even though I would really, really rather not. Um, she allows me to kind of delay things um, or um, really, in the case of Marie, take away her buffs. So she's kind of a, an emergency character, but she's also mid-row, so she benefits from Diao Chen's um, unit skill. Marie, if you haven't heard of her, she's basically the stage girl version of the Pokemon Move rollout. Um, many people will use her as a, uh, a what I call a two-girl meme, have her and then someone in front, maybe say a, a, an all-the-way upgraded Puck or Diao Chen, or you know, just straight up a tank, having them in front, and allow her to use all of her moves so that she's able to just kind of roll over, get to where she's plus 90% act, plus 90% critical chance, plus 90% critical damage, and running out like 30,000 barriers of both normal and special, where she's just an untouchable raid boss. Um, here, she's being used more of a as a support character um, because of her attacks. Um, or of her climax where she increases 
their AP the, of the entire team, unlike Foxy Mao only does the back three, Marie does the whole team, and she increases the act power of the whole team uh, by 30%, so she can be really helpful that way. She does not, however, have uh, natural fortitude, so I have the memoir to give her fortitude here. Uh, I haven't been talking about the memoirs. For Puck, agility is really important because you want her to go in front. Um, for all these other ones, I just want them to climax as soon as possible. It's really, really useful. Same for Hifumi here. By having the aquarium, she's able to climax after using her 2 AP. I don't have to rely on her using her gust of brilliance to charge for uh, her counter heal. She's obviously really good. If you've never met her, sorry, you'll just have to find out. Hound is also really good. She needs agility on her because the most, you know, the most frustrating thing you could do is queue up a dim concerto and uh, against the entire team to reduce their brilliance to virtually nothing and get outsped by Hifumi who instead charges their entire team and that was a waste of three act points. So she needs to have that agility. You'll see if I'm facing other people they don't have agility on Houndruko, I'm going to be taking my chances leaving her unbanned because I'm going to trust that Hifumi can go faster than her and charge my team. Um, Bride is useful. She's kind of down on the down low. She's kind of a, a, a utility character. Um, she'll be back there in case I need a couple of girls. If I deem that I want to run only two, me, uh, two mid row and I want to run Mori, uh, typically Houndruko is going to be banned and I'm going to be running um, Bride and Amaya at the back here. Amaya's just a damage dealer, so I have that memoir to increase her damage. Bride needs agility because she's actually... You know, at one point was one of the uh, fastest characters in the game. Now she's a fast, uh, now she's a slow character. So we need to speed her up so that we can actually um, avoid some attacks uh, getting through uh, to the back three on the turn that I use her. And you're not always going to be using her for the final act. Sometimes it's really useful to use her on the first turn of the climax to kind of weather the storm of the first few climaxes and then trust that your final act will be use, more useful than the opponent's. So that's kind of a rundown of the team that I have. Um, you'll see more of their acts uh, in progress, but I kind of wanted to give you that look in uh, to what I'm thinking of when I'm putting together this team. And then you'll start to see how I typically run out. Like last season, what I usually trotted out was Mori, then um, Diao Chan, Hifumi, uh, Bride, and Amaya. Because typically I had Marie and Houndruko banned. Um, I did not have Puck at the time. Puck is eventually going to get to the point where I'm actually going to be running her and Foxy Mao more than I'm going to be running Mori. That time is not yet. And especially if anyone's watching this, I hope you don't snipe me with that knowledge. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping to trick a few people, three in fact, uh, into letting me beat them. Um, when I move forward. So I'm going to end the video here and then I'm going to come back and we're going to do some matches.